Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Elite Mechanics. My name is Hassan, and today we are going to be working on a 1988 SL560. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to pull codes from an 8-pin diagnostic port that uses banana connectors. Here is the car, it's in great condition. Um, it looks like an original top. When the customer brought it in, they said that this was a very hard find to find one in this shape of this year with such low mileage. I mean, the car is really just immaculate for obviously its age. If you look at the interior, everything seems to be pretty complete. And it's still got really nice wood which is fantastic. Usually these are split and cracked. So I have the ignition open already as a prerequisite for what we're gonna do today. And we're going to go ahead and open the hood and locate where we need to be working. By the way, this is Kim. He works with me at KT Motoring. So Hi. Kim. He's doing a head gasket on a E36 M3 with the S50, so it's a 95. Moving the Venus unit right now. So we're moving the Venus unit right now. We have the cams locked already. So we'll let him get back to what he's doing. So this car came in to me by Steve over at Specialty Car Collection. Uh, he's located in Los Angeles. I'll put a link in the description. He's got a really nice collection of cars that he's always going through, selling, moving. Check out that engine bay. That's something, huh? For how old it is, that's really something. Okay, so first thing is to locate the diagnostic port on this vehicle. So on this particular one, because it is a convertible, you're going to find it right here in the corner. All SL, R chassis of this, this era will be right here. So I pull this, this little plug off and you can see that there are slots for banana connectors. And you'll notice that really, if I, let me shine a light on it so you can see, but there is, it's hard to, it's actually really hard to see, but you can see some of them are hollow. I put the light underneath, there's not a pin inside, but then like pin six actually has a contact inside. Pin one and three both have contacts inside. So that's pretty cool. So you traditionally to check, just the check engine light itself, you can use this click button right here and you hold it down one, two, three, let go. And then that will flash a code. So that just flashed one flash, meaning code one, which means all clear. Now note, this is only for the check engine light. This is not for any of the other systems on board. That is what these other pins are for. We have a problem with the SRS light in this vehicle. The safety restraint system is complaining about, we're not really sure, that's what we're doing here today is diagnosing it. So I found this tool on the internet by Rick's Mercedes Code Reader. I purchased it, it was like uh, 30 bucks. Not bad, it's actually pretty well made. It's got nice ends, comes with a cheat sheet, as I like to call it. Has, you know, diagrams and instructions and different fault codes, so it's pretty well done. Today we're gonna use this to diagnose the SRS. So according to the instructions, Pin one would be ground, so we're gonna put the black cable into pin one, and pin six is gonna be our SRS. Now for the power on these uh, eight pins, they do not have a power source, so we're gonna to have to figure out our own power source. So for that, I'm going to use some other tools. I have a power probe kit here. I'll put the link in the description as well. I'll put the link to everything I use today in the description. I'm going to use an adapter like this for the banana plugs, a little focus, and a lead set with a alligator clip at the end. And if we walk over to this side, we should have a junction for power over here in the corner. So you can see, here's the expansion tank, there's the firewall, we follow it down and there's a black box. You should be able to just to kind of pull up on the black box and like that, 
But if this is going to be in your way, there should be two stakes. Yep, and you can pull them out of their holes. So now we have a power source for our code reader. Put the banana clip on there. And insert our lead. Now take the other end, come across the engine bay to here, and connect these two together. You can see we powered up our light. If I let it go, it takes it off. So now that power is connected, we're ready to start reading some codes in the SRS system. I have a pen and paper out ready to go so we can see the codes. So the instructions state the light needs to be solid meaning it's ready to read, and to hold the red button down for three seconds. One, two, three, let go. One, two. So our first code in the SRS module is code two. When the light goes back solid, it's ready to read the next code. So let's go ahead and write down code two, and see what's next. One, two, three, let go. One, two, three. So we got code three. Again, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Solid again. So code eight. One, two, three, let go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Back solid, so that was code nine. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, okay, so code two again, meaning we've come back around from where we started. So we had code two, three, eight, and nine stored in the SRS module. So now we can go figure out what those codes are and what's wrong with the SRS system and why the car's upset. But I really like to interrogate the fault memory the, the correct way to figure it out versus just throwing parts on as we like to call it shotgunning parts. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we've got all the faults pulled, which is good. Now that we've pulled all the faults from the unit and we've looked them up against the chart, we saw what each code description was. And eight and nine, I'm not really too sure about. Um, low voltage in the indicator lamp, those could have been caused by literally low voltage or you know something else. But the next step to, to really figure out if it's the control unit or the ignition circuit of the airbag, we're gonna go ahead and clear the faults, all of them individually with the tool that I was using earlier. And then we're going to drive the vehicle and see what comes back. And usually the first fault that comes back is gonna be our culprit and what we, we need to focus on to make the repair. So let's go ahead and get into that. So I've cleared all the faults and how I did that is, I read the code, so it's gonna flash one, two, as soon as it's done, hold this for eight seconds, and that will clear the fault. So you'll notice I've cleared all the faults, but code two is the only one remaining. So one, two, three. One, two. And then we'll back solid, letting us know it's already reading the code. One, two, three. One, two. So all the other codes were able to be erased except for code two. So this is what I was talking about. To diagnose it and find out what the actual culprit is, we wanna get rid of all the past events that may have triggered the other faults and get down to business on what's actually upsetting the vehicle. So code two, if we recall correctly, is the unit for the SRS. Now, I am not super surprised that this is the problem. That is a common issue. The SRS computers get corroded over time and they fail. This is a pretty well-known problem with these cars of this year and this era. I will probably pull it out and recondition it. If I cannot succeed doing that, then I will fork out the money for a factory unit 
so long as the customer approves it. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for viewing my video and uh, you know checking out my shop. We do a lot of luxury and exotic vehicles here. Here's a Gallardo I got back here actually that I'm doing some work on. I do a lot of Rolls Royce and Bentley. And then this is my race car that uh, I race Spec E30 with NASA with. I will do a video on this car on its own at some later point. Over the weekend, I uh, took the engine out and uh, I'm gonna have the head sent out for resurfacing amongst other things. But uh, basically what happened was, is I was a numb nut and did not ventilate my catch can that I made and it crankcase pressure rose really high. And so I blew this balance shaft seal or oil pump shaft really is auxiliary shaft blew right out like literally when i took the motor out this was sticking all the way out i kind of pushed it back in already but so i was just puking oil so essentially i trailered my car way out to button willow to race to only work on it in the sun and go home because i was not going to compromise other racers puking oil all over the track thank you for watching and i will be back soon with another video